The Word of God tells us that we are to go from faith to faith and from glory to glory. All right. Here's the amazing thing about that text. The Word of God says that we are to go from faith to faith. But with going from faith to faith, there's a glory that we see every time our faith grows. So when we go from faith to faith, it gives us an opportunity to see another glimpse of God at a greater place, at a greater level. What God wants for you is to grow from faith to faith because there's something else he wants you to see. There's something else he wants to do on your behalf. There's something else he wants to rock for you. He wants to demonstrate his power. He wants to demonstrate his ability, all right? It requires for us to go from faith to faith. So we cannot be complacent. We cannot be comfortable. We can't be okay with believing at the same place we believed yesterday. Today is a new day and it requires a growth in our faith. Get ready for the word of God that you're getting ready to sit under. It's going to help you go from faith to faith so that you can see a new level of glory. Get ready. Well, hello, New Life family. Welcome to our Cyber Sanctuary. I'm excited to be here with you again. I'm Elder Mark Wilson, and I'm sharing the word with you on this evening. So this is an exciting word. So I want to pray, and I want to get started, get off and running into this word. So pray with me, if you will. Father, we bless you. We love you. We thank you once again, God, for another time that we have, God, just to dig into your word, God, just to learn, to study, and to hear, Father. God, first, we give you right, we give you authority to rule in this place. Speak right now, Father, and we will listen, God. Move and we shall follow, God. Illuminate your word to us on today, Father, that we might be able to receive what we need, God, to last and to stand in this last and evil day, Father. God, strengthen us, encourage us, and convict us where we need, God. Holy Spirit, we loose your power in this place. Have your perfect way in this Bible study. All these things we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. All right, as you all know, we are in the year of extraordinary faith. Yes, it's still hot. It's still like fire in my bones. And we are still growing and developing on this year. Thank you, Bishop, for releasing that over us. Last time we were together, we talked about what is stunting my growth. If you did not see that, you can go through our YouTube page and you can look that up. That will catch you up with what we're talking about today. But for those that did not, I'm going to give, or those that did view it, I'm going to give just a short review and that's going to lead up to our fresh information for today. All right, so as you all remember, we talked about Mark 4 last time. We talked about the parable of the sower, right? We talked about um, what is stunting my growth and we answered that question through our points, right? So we asked that question and our first answer was the lack of care and the lack of urgency concerning the word. And we talked about there should be a clutching, right? If somebody gave us something that had value, right? I'm reminded of the movie Ocean's Eleven, if anybody's seen it, right? So whenever you have someone who, who has that briefcase with a lot of money, they will handcuff their arm to the suitcase so you can't just take it from them so same thing the word talks about when that word goes down immediately the enemy just takes it up he snatches it away from us and we need to have that handcuff kind of thing going on with the word right i need to commit to this thing so the enemy can't easily take it away from me all right also, another part of that that God was revealing through me to me throughout this week is that we can't just be talk, right? Sometimes we're like, you know, my bishop said and my pastor said that we have to be more than just conversation. We got to start living this thing and the word is not realistic. It's not real to us, right? And so we have to, to live a life. We have to dig further in and develop that true relationship with God and with Christ. All right. So the second point that we had on last week, we talked about why is my, my or what is stunting my growth? A hardened heart, right? Or that is the Bible said that stony ground, right? We won't let the word of God penetrate certain areas in our lives. All right. And so we want, we want God to just shake up that hardened heart, that stony ground. So the word, so the root of God's word 
can fall down into our hearts, but also that word should be able to take hold of any and every area and department of our lives. The word should be penetrating how I treat my friends. It should be penetrating how I speak. It should be penetrating what I watch on TV, what movies, what music I It should be penetrating every area, just like roots do, right? They grow far, wide, and deep, right? They're trying to cover as much ground as possible, right? So the same thing with the word. It's trying to cover every area. We can't have those locked Attics or those locked basements that we don't let people come in. All right, but hold, let him come in, let him sup with you. But look, if he's gonna sup with you, let him upstairs, let him go, let him take over. All right, let him take over your house. All right, so we had a little bit of a sidebar last time, right? We talked about that diagnosis, right? We talked a little bit about if you see me one day, right, and you see me the next day and I'm limping, right, or I got crutches and you see me with a cast on, it shows that look, I've been diagnosed with some weaknesses or some broken areas in life, and we have to go to the master, all right, if our growth is stunted, right, or some places that are just broken in my life and I cannot grow, right? I need to give those things to the master so he can heal those things, right? We talked about also the, our traditions, all right? Making the word of none effect, all right? The next one we talked about, um, I'd rather be rich on earth than in heaven, right? Store for yourself treasures in heaven, all right? And not here on earth, all right? That's very important because the word talked about those thorns, right? That seed falling amongst thorns and they choke out the word, right? And he talked about the deceitfulness of riches and those type of things, all right? The cares of this world, all right? They're the thorns, all right? And so the last point that we made, it was just that once our obstacles are moved, right? We can run, right? Once you move all of the obstacles out of my way, I know how to run, all right? So now we're going to continue with the same thing. What is stunning my growth? And we're going to answer those questions. All right, we're going to keep going just as we did in that same vein from last week, all right? So today, we're going to answer this thing right at the top. What is stunting my growth part two? All right, and the first answer, all right, and it will be our, I guess, our subtitle for us on this evening or on today would be just fears. What is stunting my growth? The answer is fears. And so we're going to go here to Matthew chapter number eight, verse number 23, and we're going to read down to 26. All right. Very familiar passage of scripture. All right. But we're going to look at this thing. So Jesus has been teaching and behold, he gets into the boat. And they go to the other side. And verse number 23 picks up and it says, And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. All right, and behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he saith unto them, Why are you so fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose, rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Verse 26 again. Why are you so fearful, O ye of little faith? Look, look, there is something going on within you, and your fear is arising, and your faith is diminishing. All right? And so, this is where we where we struggle at. And I want to just release some, some principles concerning fears, all right, that's going to go with us as we talk on tonight, okay? We're going to release just a few principles first that's going to go with us, all right? Now, fear is the arch enemy of faith, all right? Fear is the arch enemy of faith. Whenever you look through the word of God and we see Jesus doing different miracles, especially when he was dealing with the disciples on a few different occasions, he deals with them concerning their fear. And we hear him talk about their faith. Why were you afraid? Right? He's dealing with the fear factor there. All right. And many times we do the exact opposite. Right. We don't confess those fears. We don't speak on them. We try to ignore them, right? And so Jesus, he deals with it head up and face forward uh, against this with the disciples, all right? I want you also to jot this down. This is probably one of the biggest, biggest points, all right? You cannot grow in faith without addressing fear, 
All right, you cannot grow in faith without addressing fear. There are so many different examples of this that we see in the Bible um, where, where they had to address their fear before they could do this great exploit for God. Okay, so I want you to know that even you go back to Joshua, that's one of them. He said, look, be of good courage. Look, don't be afraid. He said, be of good courage. Don't be afraid. You're going to have some things that's going to come to you that's only, catch this, it's only designed just to scare you back into your hole. All right? It's, it's, it's like that barking dog. You ever seen a dog? And some of y'all may have, I have a good friend, has a dog. Dog, as soon as you walk in, it's, I mean, chipping and chopping and barking. But, I mean, as soon as you get up on him, get close, he starts sniffing. You say, oh, well, I'm good. And some things, the enemy is just coming to bark just to see if we'll run away, just to see if we'll be apprehensive. And so the enemy does that many times. He's barking as loud as he can just to set in fear on the inside of us. All right. Uh, also, another quote that's going to go with us today, the, 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 this adage that we've known for so long, it is there is nothing to fear. Right? I can hear you finishing it at home. All right, There's nothing to fear but fear itself. And that statement is so cliche and we hear it, but it is so true. There's nothing to fear, but when you recognize that you have fear, that's when you know it's a problem. All right, We dress it up many ways and we say, oh, I don't like that, or mm, I'm not, I don't know about that, or... You know, we dress up our fear in many different ways. We call it sometimes preferences or, or that's just not the way I roll. Sometimes it's our fear masked up because it's hard for us to admit where our fears live. All right. When you do see when your fears are exposed. All right. You got to run from those fears. You got to divorce them on the spot. All right. Now, here is a powerful part about this. All right, here's the powerful part about this thing, all right, is that there is a miracle on the other side of your fears, all right? There's a miracle on the other side of your fears. Here's the blessing that at least these guys, they went to Jesus with their fears, right? They said, look, we perish for our lives. We're going to die at least like the example we gave last week, right? If I came in hobble, right? Or if I come in with the crutches and the calves, right? Both of them, you can see there's been an issue, but one of them, I went to the master to get sewn up, to get help, to get healing. And one of them, and some of them, what we do in this age, right? We just keep on going. We're just fearful and we don't even get Jesus. We let him sleep, right? We don't even go to him in prayer on the issues and the fears and the concerns that we have in life. All right. Now, here are some of the fears that deal with us, and we're going to have some sub points. All right, we say that we're stunning my growth. Fear is the answer, and we have some sub points under that subtopic. All right, and so number one, one that attacks us in the church, uh, especially those that have calling on their lives, you know who you are. All right, it's the fear of the unknown. The fear of the unknown. Yeah, we're going to deal with this thing. All right. The more powerful that your gift is, the more the enemy will try to shut you down, shut you up, or distract you. He wants you to just be <laughs> focused on something else like my man Job, right? Look, we're, he tells you, go to Nineveh. How did charges come into the conversation? There was a distraction. All right. And many of us, the enemy wants to distract us with other things. All right, to keep our eyes off of him and the target and the assignment that he has for us. All right, we're going to run over to Luke chapter 5. Gosh, Bishop did an awesome job uh, with Luke chapter 5 a few weeks ago, and it absolutely was a blessing. I'm not going to rehash that, but we're just going to pull one little piece out of what he taught. All right, Luke 5, 1 through 3. All right. As we know, and we read a few weeks ago, and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon Jesus to hear, excuse me, to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesaret and two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. Man, I wish I got, oh, 
tag in and preach that thing. It was, it was delicious. Verse 3, and he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. All right? Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draw. All right. Oh, man, that thing was so good. It's still with me. All right. But look, catch what Simon says. That this is the operative verse based on what we're talking about today. All right. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Ah, here's this thing is so good. Now, catch this. Simon had already gone out, right? He had already taken their boats out. They caught nothing, right? So now there's a line that goes forward. There's a line between what you know, what you've done, and what you've seen, and what the future holds, right? Jesus tells him, look, I want you to launch out. Go somewhere you haven't gone before, but only thing that Simon could see was what he had already done. And many times when you talk about the fear of the unknown, it's like, you know what? I don't know what's out there, but I do know what's all around me. I know I failed here. You know what? I can deal with that. Hey, I missed it here. I can deal with that. Hey, I got a couple victories here. Hey, I'm good with that. I'm good with just staying right here at bay. I'm okay with staying in this safe place. And that's what it does. It's safety. This is the same thing that he's saying. I'm safe right here. I don't have to waste any more resources. I don't have to waste any more time because I don't know if you guys know, but it calls resources to go out. Even now when you're talking about the Navy or any ship that you know that's going out it, because I got to have people go with me. I have to pay them, right? The resources and the tools that I'm going to need while I'm out, fuel, all that. It costs money. It costs time. It costs effort, right? And so he said, I got guys I'm taking out with me. I'm going to have to pay them. And if we come back out, I'm not going to be making any money. He said, look, I'm safe right here, Jesus. I'm good right here. All right. And this is where we struggle right now in the, to the church because we are afraid. You say, instead of launching out, I'll stay right here where it's safe. I've already launched out. I got this far. But he said, look, come on out to the deep. Come on out. All right. Come on out. All right. Now. Launch out into that place that's unfamiliar. Now catch this. And watch. There will be provision and protection. Look, and Jesus does it here, right? When he goes out, they take down more fish than they can. the boat can even carry. He has provision when you launch out beyond your fears, right? When you launch out. That when you get hit the ground there, there's already provision and protection around you because our questions come up. God, what's going to happen? Am I going to, what, what if, hey, uh, and we fight, get to that place and we need to have our minds in the place where we just believe, like we talked about a couple months ago. Just believe. Don't believe and worry. Don't believe and think about tomorrow. Don't believe and just believe and go on what he's saying to you. All right. Now. Many of us are stuck at 5a, verse number 5. All right, and Simon answering said unto him, We have toiled all the night and have not taken nothing. Now he said, At thy word, I'm still, he still obeys. All right, but many of us get stuck right there. Jesus, you know what happened last time. Look, you know what happened to them. Look, my friend, he's a preacher, man. Look how they treated him. They disrespected him. And, and look, look what happened to this church. Their church closed down. And you, they're a singer, man. I don't think my voice is as good as that. So we have all these things, and we never get past. We never get to, nevertheless, that will be done. Basically, what my man Simon says. We don't even get to that part. We get there, and we run away. Take off running. All right? And so we have to press past the unknown. All right? And trust that God knows where we will land. All right? Now, and God, as, as I was looking at this thing, God gave me just a quick, short vision right, of a child, right? And he said, launch out into the deep, right? He gave me a vision of that child in the shallow end, right? That, that, that pool, right? That pool be about maybe a foot, maybe two feet high, right? That water is going to come about 
as <laughs> safe as they feel, right? Maybe to their stomach, right? All right, they're in their place. They're in that safe place, right? If they don't know how to swim yet, right? So they're going to be there. They're going to remain there, right? So nothing can, if you're at the ocean, look, sharks can't come that far inland. Look, this is a safe place. I can't drown while I'm here in the shallow end. Right. And many of us find ourselves needing in the spirit to launch out further. But we're safe right here. We're safe. We don't know what's in the ocean. I can't see what's down there. I can't see if it's any small. I can't see down there. I can't see the water here. Funny how. Right. And when you're in the shallow wind, especially if you're at the beach, you can see the sand right in the shallow water. But when you get a little further out, it's pitch dark down there. Depending on what water you're in, right? If you're here in Virginia, that's the case, right? All right. Now, so now he gave me that vision of this child in the shallow end of the pool, right? But didn't Paul tell us, he says, look, uh, the, he says, look, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. He said, look, his desire is that there will be no more children tossed to and fro. So at some level, we have to grow up in our strength with him. Some of, some of us have spent 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years with Jesus. And some of us are still in the shallow end of the pool in our faith. All right. We're still afraid to launch out to the deep. And we've been with, walking with him for decades, all right? But so imagine in this example, right? This guy, he's fully grown. He's six foot tall. He's six foot two, six foot three, or whatever. Five foot three, five foot five. But the water is coming all the way down to your calf. I mean, you're, there is no threat of, <laughs> no threat of drowning. you still in the shallow side of the pool. At some point, you start getting six foot tall. Look, come on down where it's a little bit. Maybe if you want to get down to your chest. Look, we at the shallow wind. Look, look, I got some witches. Some folk just like to kick their feet in the water. I get it. I get it. I definitely get it. But this is really to show us in the spirit, right? Not about who can swim or who can't swim. That's not the thing. The thing is, when it comes with Jesus Look, he said, look, I'm going to give you all the inflatables that you need. Got them on your arms, shoulders, legs, knees. All the, he give you the goggles, give you the nose picture. I, look, I have everything you need. The Bible says you have everything you need for life and godliness. He's already provided them for you. So can you imagine, right, somebody in my stature, right, got the, the floats on, the elbows, the shoulders, the knees, right, Got flippers going, got, got the goggles on, nose pinch, everything. I'm six foot tall and I'm standing in water that comes to my calf. Right? Even if I do go out there, I got some fluff, some flotation devices that will keep you. And, and uh, Bishop Bernard, Dr. Bernard, excuse me, said to us, look, now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. He's going to keep us from sinking. He's going to keep us from drowning out there where it's too deep. He is able to keep us. When you go out there to the deep end, he is able. Even them in the boat, he was able to keep them. Look, to the fact that he was asleep. Right? All right? What a God who's going to protect us no matter how deep the water is that we go in. All right. Now, catch this. We're going to move on to our next one. We talked about what is stunning my growth. We said it's fear. Now we're going to talk about these subtitles. We talk about the fear of the unknown. Fear of the unknown. And the next one is the fear of unworthiness. Go with me to Numbers chapter number 13. And can you please bring up the graphic with the scripture here? Excuse me, so everyone can read along. All right, number chapter number 13. I want to give you guys a background. As many of you guys know, this is when um, this is when the, the tribes they were coming together, they had they were spying on the land. They sent the 12 guys to be spies into the land that they were gonna go into, right? At this time, um, Moses he was done, and my main man Jehoshua. He was coming up on the scene. Well, Moses was still their leader, but he was leading them. This is the end of his journey, right? And this is when he's showing them the promised land. Jehoshua or Joshua was sent into the land to spy it out, right? So they go there, they come back, and they are um, 
tasked with giving the people a report of what they found when they were there. All right. Now, I love this thing. So we had Joshua and Caleb. These are the only two that had a good report. The other 10 did not. And we're going to pick up right here in verse number 30 where Caleb begins to speak. So Caleb, he steals the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land. And look, sometimes when we get in our flesh, when we get afraid, we get more details. Look, the, <laughs> my man Caleb, he said, look, let's go up. Let's possess it. We're able. Let's go. Boom. Sometimes we get so far into the details, we psych ourselves out. All right. He said, look, <laughs> they brought up a uh, we're not able, they're stronger than we are, and they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. So why are the people there still alive? See, folk get the line too. Look, when folk get afraid, watch out. This extra credit right here. Watch out for folk that don't want you to do something or that's fearful. They'll make up stuff. All right? They'll make up whatever they can to keep you at bay. <laughs> if it eats up the inhabitants, how are there people there? All right? Now, catch this. And all the people that we saw, so there were people there, in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. So this is going to be our operative scripture for the rest of the time that we're together. It won't be much longer, right? All right? But this is really, it's a lot of good nuggets in here. And so the fear of unworthiness, this thing plagues the church. This spirit plagues the church. All right? First thing. In verse number 30, once he said we're able to possess it, there shouldn't have been in verse number 31. It should have been, they should have moved right there. And sometimes the same thing with God, right? We're like my man Gideon, he said, look, you're able to go, let's go. We're like, mm, God, well, what if this? What if that? Well, hey, you know what? I stutter. Well, hey, well, look, I'll show you. Won't you have do come on? The, look, we got all these other things that come on. When he spoke the word, we should realize that we're able, we're capable right there when he tells us that we can go. All right? So that's the first, that's the first thing. All right? Next. Sometimes we let our fears talk us out of our victory. All right? Next. Fear will cause you. All right, fear will cause you, or this fear of unworthiness, all right? But fear in and of itself, it will give you inverted sight. Jesus. Fear will give you inverted sight. What are you talking about? All right, we have some examples like when Jesus comes on the scene, right? The first time he teaches Matthew chapter number five, he says, look, you've been told it was an eye for an eye, two for a tooth, but I say to love you and do good unto those. So you guys have been seeing things the opposite. I want to give you an illuminated sight. I want to give you the way it should be. And he rewrite, rewrites the rules that the people have been living by for literally hundreds of years. All right. At that time. So Jesus gives them. He's fixing their sight. Their inverted sight. All right. And so the same thing with us. When we have fear, our sight is inverted. All right. Next. This inverted sight will cause you to disregard your ability. Catch the thing. He said, look, they are so we are not able to go up against the people. They say we're not able. Caleb said we are able, not just able to go up, but we can possess it. Right. And so which, which report do you believe? And so we stand in the same place, right? God says that you can, and the enemy and folks and people say that you can't. Whose report will you believe? All right, next. It also causes you to disregard your power. Disregard your power. It says it right here. We are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. 
right? And so we know that in and of my own strength, I go up against these giants. I don't have the power, but with God, right, all things are possible. We know these cliche, cliche scriptures, but when it comes to the challenges of life, that giants that come against us, we cower in shame and fear. Look at David, right? He says, look, who is this? Uns look, I don't care who he is. I have the power with God, right? I have the power with God to defeat this guy, this Goliath. All right, because we have God on our side. Fear will cause us this inverted sight, right? It will cause us to speak evil of good things, right? It said they brought up an evil report of the land. This is the land that God had prophesied that would be the people. Look, you can go way back to when he was speaking with Abraham. He said, look, there's going to be a land I want to promise to your children, a land flowing with milk and honey. All these things have been prophesied about this land, and you show up and you bring up an evil report. So sometimes it will cause us to call, to call the good things that God has created, the blessings. Have you ever been in a place in your life where God has blessed you? You knew it was a blessing. This is awesome. This is, and you know, a year, two years down the road, we're like, man, this is the worst thing that ever happened. How can I call the blessing? of God a curse in time. The blessing remains a blessing. I just don't know how to either take care of it or I don't know how to take care of the thorns that are associated with it. I don't know how to take care like like um, Paul talks about that thorn in the side, right? I can't deal with the thorns. So when God blesses us with a blessing, it's always going to be a blessing to us. We have to know how to manage it. But we have to deal with our fears so it doesn't cause us to see things that are not there, that won't give us inverted sight. We all have to face those fears head up, face first, especially this fear of unworthiness. So we're going to close right there, church, but pray with me as we close this word. Father, we thank you, God, for this word. We thank you, Lord God, that you're, you're growing our faith in this time and in this season, Father, and you're helping us navigate and get rid of and deal with our fears, the different fears that attack us. Give us the wisdom, give us the strength, and give us the power to overcome them. Father, strengthen us as a church, God. God, that we might be able to please you, God. For without faith, it's impossible to please you. We give you glory, honor, and praise for this word. And all these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you in your life. See you next time.